Hello everybody, uh, my name is Bruce. I'm here to talk about uh, my pollen press and what I make here. It's actually take 100. My brother's on the camera and he's uh, not doing too well at it. <laughs> anyway, this is the name of my company, it's the press. Here's my phone number. I hope you can see that. <laughs> Anyway, what I've got here in front of me is my smallest press. It's a two ton, two by three inch rectangular aluminum mold. Um, very nice mold. Um, they're made of aircraft aluminum, precision machine, they're dead square in all directions. So we can make the pistons fit really nice and uh, accurately tight. So what we're going to do, what I'd like to start with, is how to uh, take the air out of your hydraulic jack. And what happens a lot of times in shipping is an air bubble will form because it, it's, it's laying on its side and shipping, it's upside down and everything. You'll get a small air bubble in here at the pump. And what happens with that is it doesn't allow it to pump. You can pump and pump and pump. It's not pumping oil. It's trying to pump air, and air won't lift it. So when you get this, don't panic. It's, there's nothing wrong with your jack. It's just you've got a very small little air bubble in here. Now, this jack, they, they come with these handles. As you can see at the end of this one, it's made to fit over the T on your valve. Now, they work. You know, there, there's no question they work. But sometimes you just need a little tighter because you'll have oil bypass. So I always suggest just take a pair of pliers and snug it up by hand. It doesn't have to be torqued tight. Just snug it up like that. Now if you want to get the air out, tighten your valve, as I just did. Pull up on the shaft like a syringe. And what you're doing here is you're sucking the oil from the reservoir up through here and you're blowing that air, little air bubble out that's causing it a headache. Now as you can see, you can't push it down because we're solid air, or we're solid oil now. So, relax the valve, push this down, tighten your valve again, and as you can see, you're back in business, it's working. So if you get it in the mail, and this happens, don't panic. Very easy to fix. And the main reason I'm doing this video is I've tried to explain this on the phone to people and it, it, it's just a picture is worth a thousand words so I, I'd rather do it like this. So that cures that problem here. Now if you buy a, a less expensive model instead of the aluminum square or rectangular molds it's going to come without this. But what you will get is this in the bag. And what this is for is as you can see there's no way to grab that to pull it. So just screw this in a bit. And what it does, it gives you something to pull on to perform the same operation. That's the only reason that this is in there for. The piston, now this is a two inch. They go from inch and a half, two inch, and three inch in the round molds. The piston, is made to fit right on top of that. So it's not going to work well if you screw that on top. It's a smaller diameter. It's going to make it rock. Uh, so just take that right off. That's only in there to perform this operation. So what we're going to do here, we're back now. Tape and we're going to put this back in its place. We're going to screw the flat plate back on top. And the reason you got the flat plate there is because the piston you're pulling, or pushing, sorry, <laughs> sits on top of that inside. So if you want to just come over here, Scott, and uh, I, I just like to show here. If you, if you want to put your mold on, 
And as you can see, the, the plate inside isn't lining up, as you can see. So what you want to do is remove this. Turn this clockwise and line it up so that when you put your mold on, it's pretty much concentric with the outsides of the mold. So that way, you can put your piston in. And as you can see how nicely the, the, they fit. Uh, there's no problems with extrusion around it. The plates really fit nice. Um, we really try to make these uh, as accurate and dead square as we can. Uh, so there you go. You put your key, whatever you're pressing, inside there. Put your top plate on. And as you can see, I don't use um, wing nuts. It's, uh, they're really too thin. They don't work well. And I, use, I prefer to use these coupling nuts. They cost a little more, but they're, uh, they're going to last you forever. And all you got to do is screw them down by hand. You don't have to tighten them with a wrench or anything. And you're, you're in business ready to go. So you close your valve. This handle is made to go together. So what you want to do, put the, the large part into, their, into the jack. And you pump it until you've pressed it to what you want. That's how these presses work with the jack. And they come with round molds, square or rectangular molds. Now what our new product is here, is that we're selling just the molds for people that have shop presses and they don't need the jack and all the setup here. We've got them in all sizes. What I'm showing you here is the 2x3, which is the same as this, a 3x3 and a 3x5. These are made, and I'll show you over here at the, uh, at the, pre at the shop press here. And, and these are made for guys that get shop presses in their garage. What you want to do, it might be a little dark in this corner here, but... Uh, no, nope, not really. So what you got here, it's just a small aluminum plate. Put your mold on it. Put your nuts on, and again, just finger tight's fine. The, the only reason these are there is, is to stop extrusion at the bottom. So that holds it dead on the bottom. You put your key in or whatever you're pressing, and you put your piston in. And that sits right in on top. You put it in your shop press, and away you go. You may need to use a, a smaller rod or something in between the press, but I'm sure you'll figure that out. But any, these are the, uh, the new molds that we're selling for guys with presses like this. Now, these are heavy-duty molds. These aren't, these aren't molds for a pre-press, for a rosin press. I know you see them on the internet and they're uh, 80 bucks or something like that. They're very thin wall and they're made for exactly what they're used for. It's for a rosin press, a pre-press for a rosin press. These are for pressing pollen or hash, whatever you want to call it. They come in a variety of sizes, right up to 6x9. I'm sorry I don't have one here to show you, but it gives you an idea. We're, this one here is a 3x5, 3x3, 2x3. And uh, all aircraft aluminum, precision made. Um, we really do our best in making a quality product here, so we don't want any comebacks. We don't want anyone phoning us and complaining, <laughs> nothing like that. So I hope this helps you. If you buy one of my presses, you can call me anytime if you have any problems. The only problem I've ever had is this air problem, and it's such an easy thing to fix. So, my name is Bruce. My brother Scott's on the camera there. He's too handsome, we can't show you there, but uh, hmm. my company's called The Press. Here's my phone number. I really hope to hear from you guys, or girls, whoever. And... Uh, Thank you for your time.